everyone. Welcome back to House Plants Gone Wild. My name is Kelly. Uh, today I'm in the garage, a uh, little bit of a different setting. I just wanted to go through some of the soil mixtures that I make and the types of pots that I use them in. Um, going to be going through how I mix them, the different ratios, uh, and sort of the best plants that I've found that works for me for the soil mixtures that I make. Um, also, I'll go through some of the different benefits that come with a little bit of the different drainages and water retention. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoy. So for this video, I would like to clarify that I never reuse my, uh, my soil. I always make sure that I have fresh new soil each time I repot, even if I had ooh, dirt in my eye. I uh, always make sure that I have fresh new soil for every time that I repot and I usually keep a bucket um, just for the disregarded old soil just so that way you don't get any uh, bacteria or any um, sort of like insects that might be living within the soil from a previous plant. Um, I also like to re um, use my potting soil bags as you can see right here. Um, that way I can just sort of collect all the old soil and at the end of the summer um, I'll usually put it in the um, in the compost pile. Uh, that way it can just sort of help with compost in the spring um, get a good kickstart uh, for the summer months. So to start off here, uh, first thing that I have, I'll leave the descriptions in the bottom. Ugh. I have miracle Grow. I keep it in an Ikea bag. It's a little bit easier to move around. Uh, this soil is pretty nice because it's it's got a good like drainage medium to it. Uh, it's got some perlite in it mixed in. Uh, seems to work really well, but it's sort of generic and I don't use it all uh, the time, uh, depending on the type of plant that I'm using it for. The other thing that it's good for is it contains perlite. So this is where you're gonna get your good drainage. If it will focus, it's a little bit bright. Anyways, it's literally just a like a snowy dust. This helps with drainage. The other thing that I like to use is this. This is called palm tree soil from uh, Bellaterra. Bellaterra. Yeah, so this one's this one's pretty good. You know, it's got sphagnum, peat moss, um, sand, perlite, lime. Lime's good for your pH balancing in your soil, um, and some composted softwood bark. So this is good, just an extra medium. And this one here is really dark, um, but it's something you want to mix in. I've found because it can turn quite muddy and you don't want mud in your plants. Another great thing for moisture retention is sphagnum peat moss. This stuff works great. Uh, I use it in almost all my plants. Uh, the only thing I don't really is cactus so much. Even then I do actually add a little bit. Um, just the slightest bit though because it does retain moisture. If you're looking for more of aeration, I use orchid bark. This is something new that I've been trying, and uh, it does actually help a little bit with drainage, but the only thing you have to watch out for is fungus gnats. They like to burrow in orchid bark, um, and sometimes that can be perfect breeding grounds for them. So just something to watch out for, but I do add this, and I'll go through the ratios of how much I add. The next one is a little bit trickier to show, but it's this one, the Pro Mix. Uh, mycorrhizae. Uh, this is sort of just good bacteria for the soil. It gives you some a little extra aeration. Uh, it doesn't actually hold much moisture. It dries out quite quickly. Let's just set this back up here. My tripod broke. Um, yeah, it doesn't actually like hold much moisture, but it does give it a good sort of growing medium and it's got good bacteria in the soil. So I'll go through some of the different ratios and how I mix my soil. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to start off with is something to mix with. I have the old spoon. I have two different, three actually, three buckets. I have the zinc plated, zinc plated metal bucket. I have a big blue bin. Uh, and then I have this smaller, older planter that I've been using. This is pre-mixed right now. Um, this one's kind of good because you don't want your soil sitting out for too terribly long during the winter months. Um, that way it stays more sterile and prevents any uh, sort of bugs from getting in there. But for video purposes today, I'm going to go through um, just some of the mixtures. I'll probably use this, I think. That way it's a little bit easier to see. So let me just get rid of this old soil so that way we can start with some fresh stuff. 
Okay, so I have my empty container here. First thing that I usually like to start off with is the fluffier stuff, so that way it can add some nice air. So this right here is the, oh, this is the Pro Mix. This is that regular generic growing medium. So this I'll sort of just break it up, get it nice and chopped up here into the bucket. And that works out quite well just to get it started. You know, it's nice and fluffy. Um, it does have a little bit of bark and twigs and stuff if you're doing a smaller pot. Um, say like like this size, I will sometimes throw those out just so that way they're not, especially these little guys, uh, that way they're not taking up too much of your pot space. So that's about a good handful amount. Next is the Pro Mix Microthyse. So this one here, it clumps up really good. It's really dry, but as you can see, there's lots of good perlite in there. So that I'll just sort of break it up. Go. Mix them up a little bit. I like to also use my hands. You might not even need a spoon. So that's about 50-50 uh, right now. Get it well mixed up. There we go. This would be a good mixture. Um, you might need a little bit more organic compound. Um, but this would be a good mixture for some plants that like to dry out uh, between waterings because this won't hold on to much moisture. It's very light and fluffy, uh, not a very heavy soil, but I wouldn't recommend this for like say a cactus because it is, uh, it's quite, quite loose. You might want to add a little bit of sand, uh, just something to give uh, a little bit more structure to your soil. The next thing that I'm going to move on to is the palm soil, palm tree soil. So this has some lime in it for that pH balance. Like I said, this I'm only going to do about one handful. And I'm just going to break it up, get it nice in there, and you can see how dark that soil is. So for this one, you can mix it up or you can use a rake. I like these little ones. They're great for sort of breaking up, getting in there, mixing it well. So that's how we're looking so far. Next thing I want to do is add some sphagnum peat moth. So this is what's going to hold on to a lot of your moisture. It's quite, um, quite soft, nice and fluffy. You can just throw that in there. So that's a small handful. I'll probably do one more. It up, get it in there. Okay, and then the orchid bark. So I won't add too terribly much, probably two handfuls maybe. give the soil some nice structure because remember like plants they they're buried in the soil and usually there's things like rocks or other roots that they can attach themselves to um, that can help the plant sort of build its strength because um, you know there's wind in nature and everything that can topple over plants and it just kind of helps the roots sort of develop this gives them something to cling on to especially those nutrient searching uh, searching roots Make sure it's nice and fluffy. Okay. Now the next thing you could add is some of this perlite. Um, I don't usually add too much if it's already quite well draining, but for this I can add a little bit. Just throw a little bit on top. I'm just throwing in a little bit for video's sake. It's probably a good uh, size of one of these spoons. And then just mix it up. It can be pretty dusty, so it's kind of one of those things you don't want to breathe in too much. I'll throw this into that uh, metal bucket so that way it's a little bit easier to mix and see. So 
that's what our soil is looking like. Nice and fluffy. You know, it's got some good structure. It will hold moisture because it's got that sphagnum peat moss, but at the same time, it's not going to be a sort of a mud pit for your plants. Um, if you're going to do, say, like a fern, I might hold off on the orchid, orchid bark um, and as well as some of the sphagnum peat moss. I find with my ferns, I am watering them more often, um, but they also, they really don't like to sit in water. So um, that way, if you're watering every day or every other day, it gives them fresh water every day, drains away, and you can start off fresh. So for this mixture, it works really well um, in a lot of your ceramic pots or even plastic pots because it will drain quite well uh, mixed in with that perlite and the orchid bark. Um, if you're going to put something like uh, this in, say, like a terracotta pot, it will wick away quite quickly. Um, because the soil itself isn't going to drain or it's not going to hold too much moisture and the pot will help wick away that extra moisture. Uh, good for winter time, but at the same time you want to be kind of careful because say come summertime you're going to be watering a lot more. Um, you can do things like take away some of that orchid bark and then you're left with uh, just a little bit of a, a lighter soil. I'll get the light over here. There we go. Then you're left with just the, a little bit of less uh, sort of barky soil, uh, but you still have that organ organic compost in there. So I would say that that is a good mixture. That would be good for, say, a uh, good size 8 inch or even maybe a 10 or 12 inch pot, depending on what your root system looks like. Um, so I'll be doing some more videos on how I repot my plants, uh, what plants I repot. It is winter time, so I try not to, but I like to do it and uh, I've had some pretty good luck with repotting plants over the winter season especially if they're growing because a lot of plants they're tricked into thinking that it's still quite warm uh, we keep the humidity rel relatively high in the house and it's quite warm um, so that way it's it's sort of still growing a little bit a lot of the plants do slow down um, I've had uh, say like stromanthi uh, aglionema um, uh, monstera they're all they're all still growing in the growing season and in the winter um, so for those plants I do actually repot once in a while if they need it so for that mixture there I probably did around 30% of the pro mix growing medium indoor house plants uh, it's got all the mixes in there like perlite same with another 30% for the pro mix uh, mycorrhizae uh, just for that bacteria 20% for the uh, bellaterra um, the palm soil, that's with the pH balancing lime in there. 10% um, I would say goes towards the um, uh, perlite, um, probably 5% for each the orchid bark. No, I'd say probably 10 for the orchid bark and 5 for the um, uh, peat moss right now. And same with the perlite. Um, just because those ones I didn't add too much because both the pro mixes they have some perlite already mixed in So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'll be coming up with more uh, really soon here with um, Some repotting that I've done um, I've got a couple other plants upstairs um, such as a uh, lime zinger uh, I can't remember what it's called Xenothosum Thosuma? I'll have to take a look at that, but I have a couple other ones that I'm going to be repotting here in the near future Thanks for tuning in. My name is Kelly. This is Houseplants Gone Wild.